Before Kenja joins us today, guys, it is playoff time in the NBA, NHL, and baseball is in full swing. FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And with that, let's welcome in Kendra Douglas. She is a team reporter for the Orlando Magic. Kendra, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking some time to uh, join the show. How are you doing today? I'm good. I was hearing a little bit about what you guys were saying um, about, you know, some of the guys coming off the bench for us. And Cole Anthony is definitely someone who's been consistent off the bench for us. Um, but I'm good. I'm excited and uh, I'm ready to come to Cleveland. Awesome. Well, Kendra, I want to start with this. The Cavs said it was part of their plan, some people interpreted that differently, to play four bigs and Amani Bates in the fourth quarter of their last regular season game to avoid a potential matchup with Philly or Miami. That set up the Magic in their first round series. So I'm curious, from the Magic standpoint, are they taking that as a personal shot at them as the team the Cavs wanted to play in the first round? I don't think so. I think that they're taking it with the whole mindset that like they made it to the playoffs. I think everyone's mindset this year was playoff or bust. That was just it. So I think they were going to be excited to play against anybody. And I think against Cleveland, they know that they split the series and they have a good chance in this, in this one. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that they are kind of like, all right, cool. Like we see you, but I do think that it adds some energy to the, this playoff round. And sure. I mean, I'm excited to see what, you know, happens, especially on Saturday. But we did all watch, like we, we watched, and we <laughs> saw what happened and we were just like, I guess. All right. Kendra, give me a player on this Cavs team that you feel concerned about that, that scares you a little bit outside of Donovan Mitchell. Oh, I was going to be the one just because I think that, like, you know, he has been in and out this season. But one that I guess also scares me. Um, hmm. Well, when he gets going on threes, Max is definitely someone that I think you, you hold your breath on and you're just like, oh, I hope he messes that one. So probably Max on that one. I know you guys were talking about Dean Wade and just, you know, how his, his what's going on with him if he's healthy. But I will say, I think for me, I covered Dean Wayne actually when he was in college. So I kind of knew his game and knew what he was coming into. So when even before we got to this playoffs, he was one guy who I knew like once he gets going, once he's healthy, once he's strong, he's someone to also be like very nervous about as well. Kendra, Mike and I did a uh, playoff preview Cavs show a couple days ago. And one player on the Magic that I think a lot of Cavs fans aren't aware of is Jonathan Isaac. Can you oh, just yes. can you just explain to people what the Cavs what the Cavs have to deal with with Isaac just because he's been hurt so much he's not Paolo Bancaro he's not one of their their top name guys for a casual fan to know but Mike and I are aware of how ruthless he can be defensively. It's crazy you say that too because a couple of years ago he was that guy that everyone knew so but because of injuries it kind of you know he kind of went into the back a little bit but. Jonathan Isaac, the minister of defense, he is someone who just has shown that when he is healthy, when he is able to get out there, he is dangerous. I mean, against the Bucks, he was locking guys up and you just, you were so excited to see that he finally was getting this opportunity and this chance to show what he can do on this court. I remember talking to him in the beginning of the season and he told me he feels young, he feels springy again. He feels like he can just go out there like his rookie year in a sense. And when he said that, I was like, oh, this is going to be a dangerous man come the time that we need him. And this is the perfect time that we need Jonathan Isaac to stay healthy, to be in this position. So he is someone I would consider as a sneaky person for the Magic because he is very dangerous on defense. Yeah, he guards one through five. It's incredible what he's done over the last couple of weeks. He might be the most dangerous defensive weapon in all of basketball when he's healthy, which is crazy for a guy who plays 20-ish minutes a game. I wanted to ask you about another Magic player, though, Kendra. Franz Wagner was a guy who came into this season with a ton of expectations. He still scored about 20 points per game, but his three-point shooting over the last couple of months has kind of gone MIA. He shot just 18% from beyond the arc in the month of March. So 
Are you guys confident, or the Magic confident, he'll refine that shooting stroke, or is at this point kind of just a lost cause for Franz Wagner from three in this season? I think you always have the mindset that they're going to find it. Once they get into the groove, you're going to find it. But I also think with him, he's been challenged to kind of be a leader and kind of also work on his defense. So you saw a little bit of that this season too. Just, yeah, he might not be making the shots that you want him to see, but seeing him on defense and how he's handling other teams, you can see how much he's grown. You can see how much he is a leader. So I think what you're going to see is someone, once he gets hot, yeah, He's very hard to stop shooting a three, but he's also finding ways to help this team out in other aspects than just offensively. And I think that's kind of how you're going to see him make up for the shots that he's not taking. Kendra, you know, Paulo Bancaro, he's obviously been uh, the bright spot and the big star on the team. How do you think he'll do? You know, I think is this his first year in the playoffs, right? His first playoff experience. Mm -hmm. You know, is that something that you're worried about or do you think he'll excel, you know, during his first time in the playoffs? You know, it's funny. I said uh, in his uh, when the NBA came and did a story on him, they asked me, like, you know, about Paolo. And I said, pressure makes diamonds. And this man is ready for it. He's come into this second year just really outdoing what he did the first year. But I think that's what he lives for. I think he lives for these challenges, knowing that, you know, his rookie year is behind him. He's got to elevate himself. He's got to help elevate this team. And I think that he's looking forward to this challenge. And I, I think he's going to do well. I don't think you're going to see someone who is going to, you know, be too shy within the big bright lights of what's going to happen in the playoffs or the fact that he's made it to the playoffs. He said it's playoff or bust. He's helped this team get to this point. He is an all star. He's made it to the point where he can say, like, I want our team to do this. We, we need to do this. So, no, I don't think I think this is just going to be another game for him, but knowing what the stakes are. So I don't I don't think it's going to be too big for him. Has Jamal talked about his relationship with J.B. Bickerstaff at all? I know they've been close friends forever. Jamal c came from yeah. here. He was an assistant here for a while. I got to know him when he was here. I love Jamal. I'm just wondering the influence he's had on that team and then if he's discussed with you guys at all his relationship with J.B. Yeah, he talked a little bit about it yesterday. He said they're really good friends. They spend time together and um, – I think they, they, they're they not communicating at all through this playoff. They, you know, they realize and understand what's at stake. They can't be friends right now. <laughs> but, yeah, I think they both talked a little bit about it, just how yeah. much they're close. Um, but it's, it's cool to see the respect between those coaches. But you also know the fight that they're both going to go through and making sure their teams get come out with a win in each game. So, I think they're not they're not going to be communicating. You're not going to see any uh, friends for this playoff until after <laughs> the second round, first round. We talked about Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Isaac and how good Orlando's half court defense is a little bit earlier, and we kind of assume that when we get to the playoffs, opposing defenses they'll they'll try to blitz off pick and rolls, get the ball to the other team's best players' hands. But between Jalen mm -hmm. Suggs and Jonathan Isaac and, and Gary Harris and Wagner. Orlando has a bunch of different weapons they can kind of guard Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland with off a pick-and-roll situation. I know you're not in the coaching room, but you know Orlando much better than we do. Would you anticipate Coach Mosley and that staff trying to play pick-and-rolls more straight up and letting Suggs just kind of hound Donovan as opposed to switching and allowing Cleveland to attack the mismatch they want? Oh, you're trying to get me to, like, give you guys. No, what if, what if people are watching this and they're going to be like, There's oh, a lot you of people know watching, Kendra, so <laughs> might as well tell, might as well tell no, them. No, it's just, a, it's just between you and us. <laughs> we'll cut this part just, of the show, don't no worry. No one else is watching, it's no, just we'll, the three we'll, we'll cut this part of the show, don't worry. <laughs> right, here's what I'll say. I'll say that I think that um, Coach Mosley has a lot of trust in Jalen Suggs and what he's going to be doing out there defensively. Um, I think that he's ready for all um, – mismatches that come his way um and so i'll just leave it at that i think that you know <laughs> this is a team <laughs> this is a team that like you know they know what to expect they know what they're gonna look out for and i think you're gonna see jalen suggs really show why he deserves to be an all defensive team player i had to try i had to try um Kendra, <laughs> other question than this one i feel like you could answer in a little bit uh depth of giving away secrets but this okay. is Orlando's first time, outside of Joe Ingles, really the first time that any of these guys have had a playoff experience. Do they expect to win this series? I know we saw Cleveland come in last year against New York, and then 
it collapsed in epic fashion and Jared Allen said, well, the lights were too bright. They mm. weren't ready for that moment. Mm. Do you get the sense that this young Orlando squad is ready for this stage? I do. I think because you can see how much they've really just locked in with each other. The biggest thing that I think I took away from this whole season is what we did during the trade deadline, which was nothing. And I think that that was the instinct that we are trusting you guys. We are believing in you guys. We are putting all our energy in you guys to get us to this point. And so I definitely think that, you know, this is they always say that, like, you know, the NBA is a business. Well, this team will tell you it's more like a brotherhood. I think they fight for one another. I think they're going to push each other. Playoffs are a different level and a different beast. I will say that. I'm not, like, disagreeing with that. They are going to have to rise to the occasion and understand that they are on a whole different level now. This isn't the regular season. regular season. But I do believe that this team is at the point now where – they're ready for this. They're ready for this bright light. They're ready for this big stage. And I do think that they, they are going to come away with winning this series. Sorry, guys. I do think that they are going <laughs> to win this series and, and move forward. Well, Kendra, since you're saying that they're going to win the series, I just want to know who you got for game one. You know, it, it, what Magic. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. What, what, is your, what is your series count? What, what's the final series for you? Like, what do you... I think, like, so I think, I think Magic and five, but I think... Magic and five. Whoa. Whoa. Am I, am I hurting people's feelings? Yo, you, so the Cavs go with what game? I think here's here's the thing. I think that this team is going to come in looking to bust like through. I think that this team just is going to be coming out the gate strong. One of the things Coach Mosley has said is that as long as we work hard on the first quarter and we start game strong, it's very hard to really beat this team. And if you've noticed them, if they win the third quarter, if they are outscore the team by third quarter, they will always win that game. I think they the only one time that they've lost that is in Atlanta, and that was in Mexico City. So this team has really shown that if they can lock in, they are going to do very well. So I think that's what I think. Maybe I'm just super excited because we made it. <laughs> Maybe I'll, that's I'll, the case. I'm gonna, let you know, I'm gonna let you know something. <laughs> if okay. the Magic win right. this thing in five, it's okay. gonna be some furniture moving in Cleveland. I'm gonna just tell you that right now. <laughs> it's gonna be over with. What do you think? Okay, so what do you guys think? <sighs> I pick Cavs and six. I got Cavs and six too. <laughs> Cavs okay. and six or seven. Orlando's okay. tough. Or- Orlando's tough, and it, a lot of this comes down to guys' first playoff experience. Are they ready for the mm-hmm. moment? <laughs> Cleveland learned the hard way last year. You know, these Orlando guys have to prove they can make shots in the, in the postseason before you can fully buy in. Jason? We've been kind of talking around this. I'm just curious. Is this team early or are they on time? Do you think that this team arrived early? Have they been a surprise in, even in Orlando, kind of appearing here before people thought they were ready? Or is this the, the progression that they expected? I think they're on time. I think they're. I think this is. I think they're on time. And the reason why is because if you look at the past two years and what Coach Mosley has done, you needed the team to buy into his system. Then you needed the team to continue to buy into his system, but take what they learned and grow from there. And now they are taking what they have learned and they have made it to this point. I think this is on time for this team. I don't think this is too early. I think now you know he's laid the foundation. Like he said, he defense is what this team relies on, what they stand on. They understand that. So I think this is I think this is on time for this magic group to get to this point. Kedra, okay, last question. We'll get you out of here. Thanks again for joining us today. We're going to do a topic tomorrow. What concerns us most about the magic? So I'm curious from your standpoint, what about the Cavaliers should concern the Orlando team most? Um, whew, Donovan Mitchell, that's one. Um, and then also the way you guys cut and the way your defense is too. I think that that's one thing that has hurt us within our, the times that they have lost. Um, so I would imagine that that's something that we are going to be looking out for and trying to change. It seems like when you guys are in, when when playing zone, it's it seems to not go into our favor. So <laughs> it's it's that's kind of the things that I think this team is going to look out for come Saturday. Awesome. Kendra, very much appreciate you making some time to join us today. We will see you 
at game one up here in Cleveland Saturday, one o'clock tip. That is Kendra Douglas. Cavs the, and six. She picked the Magic. She is a Magic team reporter. But Kendra, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys.